largest wetlands in North America, the Grand Kankakee Marsh was an ecological marvel, covering much of present-day northern Indiana and Illinois. This was an area that's called the Everglades of the North. It was one of the richest wildlife habitats in all of North America. For centuries, the Grand Marsh had been a source of life-giving waters, an enchanted land filled with mystery and history. It was once the grazing land of the American bison and the nesting place for billions of passenger pigeons. The Potawatomi called the Grand Marsh Theatiki or Swampy Country. Later, Louis XIV would claim it as New France. The Kankakee Marsh area and the fur-bearing animals that were contained, it was an incredibly dense collection of natural resources that could be exploited. Market hunters filled wagon loads of venison, fur bearers, prairie chickens, ducks, geese, and other fowl. Passenger pigeons will be here forever. The skies were just blackened with them. The ducks will never kill them. Wagon loads full. The buffalo will never get killed off. We'll never run out of it. Its superabundance of fur, fowl, and fin attracted sportsmen, including U.S. Presidents Grover Cleveland and Benjamin Harrison. Ben Hur author and Civil War General Lou Wallace, and early transportation entrepreneurs, the Studerbaker brothers. The Grand Kankakee Marsh was known as Chicago's food pantry. But it wasn't just the rich bounty of animals that the marsh had to offer. Tons of crystal clear ice were harvested from the Kankakee in the winter, and exquisite freshwater pearls were dug from its floor in the summer. Retail giant Marshall Field sent workers to harvest cattails as stuffing for his furniture. Some even struck oil in the marsh. It was referred to as the only place where you could purchase land by the gallon. And below the swamp surface lay a half million acres of the most fertile soil in the world. Many sought the riches of the marsh, but at a costly price. After the Civil War, agriculture dominated the landscape and the Grand Kankakee Marsh was being drained at a feverish rate. Machines dug lateral ditches to the Kankakee River in a massive effort to tame the wetlands. By 1923, 250 miles of the Kankakee River's curves and oxbows had been straightened and dredged into a 90-mile ditch. Man had triumphed over Mother Nature. There's no cry in the wild saying, hey, do you guys have any idea of what you're about to do? Wildlife biologists estimate that the draining of the Kankakee basically eliminated about a fifth of the migratory bird population in the United States. That the swampland had no value. Today, we realize the value of it. It was the purifier for all the water that flowed through. We polluted this. When man does something and he thinks it's for a good reason or good results, or he doesn't think about what the results or long term could be, it's usually the wildlife to suffer. For centuries, the marsh gave and man took. What became of the Grand Kankakee Marsh?